This is Jamie Drummond for Good Food Revolution, as always. I'm here with Elizabeth Bennett. We're sitting in the, the square of, uh, uh, I guess we're in Stratford right now, um, in Perth County. How are you today? Well, I'm just fine and dandy. It's a bit chilly outside, but keeping warm. So, Elizabeth, please explain a little bit about what you do with regards to your uh, website and your blog and, and, and why you chose to follow Actually, that path. Uh, well, yeah, I think blogs have become a bit narcissistic to begin with. Everybody's giving their own opinion of what they think of some food or restaurant or whatever. But mm -hmm. my um, blog mostly is just to share my recipes, my ideas with people. It's really um, just a an expression of sharing with my readers um, and my family and friends. And um, I work as a fashion model. I, you know, been fortunate enough to get to travel, and um, I've um, been able to taste different foods and wines from, you know, kind of all over, well, Europe, North America, at least. Um, and the food blog, Haute Appetit, um, which is sort of a playoff of haute couture and then haute habitie, which is French for good taste. Um, it was uh, born out of my love for baking in particular desserts and um, a very good friend of mine in London from Switzerland. I would bake for him all the time, would send cookies and cakes and everything just to keep him extra sweet and um, you know those Swiss sometimes can be a bit straight. Um, anyway he said well Elizabeth you should start a blog um, because I gave him these cookies that posted the name of the cookies on Facebook and then he had all these comments from friends oh what's the recipe I love this and he joked you should start a blog which I did and um, so yeah that's kind of how it came about do you have like you said recipes there are lots of recipes on your uh, on your blog there are I have recipes I have mostly dessert recipes um, I love my sweets Especially you do. chocolate, and I have a soft spot for cupcakes, which is a bit cliche. But I, I just, I do. Um, I have some vegan, gluten-free recipes on there, um, and yeah, I mean, I do reviews for cafes or bakeries that I try, and, and also fashion. I've I love my fashion, and so I'm putting that in there as well. So, how do you integrate the fashion and the food elements? Well, I think um, it's an interesting concept having food and fashion as one because normally they're not seen together and, you know, fashion magazines and certainly in the modeling world, you're not supposed to talk about food that much, you know, it's sort of a hush-hush thing, you know, I don't eat that much. So, um, I think being able to express your enjoyment and love for food in this industry that's known, you know, for um, being sort of counter food or mm -hmm. counter eating in a lot of ways, um, yeah, it's just sort of an interesting concept to have the two together. So, when it comes to wine, what's your what's your take on all of that? Well, I'm not really a wine snob, but. Um, I just like to keep it simple with my wines. I love red wine. Um, my favorite is a good Rioja. Sp really? Spanish red. I love Spanish red. Um, and then uh, Argentinian Malbec. Which, yeah, I saw you do that which today. Which I just had. <laughs> no. You walked in and you're like, well, I'd like some Argentinian. Can you tell? I think maybe I have red teeth right now. When you were a young lady, um, what kind of food? was important to you and when with your family what kind of things were important like what did you actually grow up with when it came to food uh, well food was always a big thing in my in my family certainly um, I have three older brothers so there was always lots of food in the house lots of eating and my mother has Norwegian and Russian heritage so you'd always have sort of a you know mishmash combination of Northern Eastern European food. Um, borscht is one of the things that comes to mind that my mom would always make when I was mm -hmm. ill, or you know, in the winter time. I remember that hearty warmth of the the beets um, in that soup. Um, we also had a lot of pickled herring, which is very Northern European. 
Do yeah, you maybe. still eat that to this day? Like, do you still mm -hmm. really? So, yes. do you buy pickled herring and eat it? Oh, I at do. Home? Really? <laughs> to the shock and dismay <laughs> of my friends. I don't know. There's one of my favorite restaurants in New York is this Russian restaurant called Marivana, and they do a good borscht. So I go there now and then. Um, but yeah, we always had, you know, the pumpernickel bread and you know salmon blinis with caviar now and then on special occasions. So um, yeah, we always had a lot of food in the house, a lot of sweets too. My mom and and my aunts were always baking lots of treats and cakes and, and things like that. So, um, yeah, a lot of good memories with food. Do you eat cake every day? Because <laughs> you don't look as if you do. Um, I have either cake or chocolate. Maybe three or four times a week. I eat a lot of gluten-free vegan desserts now as well. There are good gluten-free desserts, okay? There, there really are. Read my blog. I've talked about many bakeries in New York City now that are having, making delicious gluten-free cupcakes and things. What does good food mean to you? Uh, good food means good quality produce, um, organic, locally grown, real whole food. Um, and also food that has been made with love, and that sounds cheesy, but it's really true. It's the most important ingredient. You've got to put love into that meal if you're making it for somebody. Okay. Thank you very much for joining us at Good Food Revolution this afternoon. I'm sorry I'm half in the bag. <laughs> That's all right. I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>